Yeah, I think if people aren't using it already or or are ignoring the fact that it, it exists, uh, I think they need to get ready to be behind. Uh, we've seen it accelerate extremely quickly since the launch of uh, ChatGPT. Uh, it's it's gone sort of beyond, I think, what anyone else, what what anyone would have kind of thought it would uh, by by now. <laughs> Even some of the top uh, people working in AI are surprised at how advanced it's become in sh- such a short period of time. So. Um, my personal view is, and I think it echoes a lot of views that I've seen out there, is that um, I think it will increase productivity, not just in PR, but in, in all in all different ways. You know, it probably will steal some jobs. I started in the communications industry around 16 years ago. Uh, I studied journalism and script writing at university. Uh, I always wanted to be involved in news in some form or other. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's a journey that I've wanted to be on since I was about 11 years old, I, I think, when I first visited the BBC studios in Nottingham. I was just kind of wowed by the glamour of it. I mean, it's not always very glamorous, right? But um, yeah, it was just something I wanted to do. Um, over the last 16 years, I've held positions in different multiple industries, everything from head of marketing at a burger chain in Australia when I was living there for a year, uh, social media and content at a media intelligence company, um, and uh, also looking at kind of reputation and crisis at a recruitment uh, agent, uh, recruitment company. Um, and now I lead uh, head up comms and marketing at uh, FinTech. So Move has been around for about uh, three years. Um, we operate as, well, the, the idea started in Nigeria uh, for a very local problem, uh, which was that people don't have access to credit uh, very easily over there, uh, which then means that they're not able to have access to asset ownership, i.e. a car. Uh, so we partnered um, with one of our partners over there uh, to, to be able to provide finance uh, and a vehicle to our customers, uh, which then allowed them to, to work on that, that particular platform, um, which, you know, the idea is that it's, you know, we're, we're, we're challenging some of the uh, kind of issues that happen around the world globally to, uh, in terms of kind of credit and visibility and access to finance. Uh, and I think quite quickly the business realised that it's it could be you know it's it's not just a local problem to Nigeria it's a very global problem. Um, there are over you know a billion people who are unbanked or underbanked uh, in the world, um, and we feel that there's a huge a- opportunity uh, to to change the lives of mobility entrepreneurs globally. Um, so. In three years, we have scaled quite quickly. Uh, We're now in 13 markets uh, across the world uh, and we're we're looking to grow even further. Uh, We, yeah, so I joined the business about seven months ago um, as heading up the external comms. Uh, My role has since developed to uh, kind of oversee a matrix marketing team uh, of global marketing managers worldwide. Uh, so yeah, quite quite a big remit, uh, lots to do. I can see lots of opportunity uh, to tell the move story. Um, so yeah, it's very exciting for me and just, you know, being able to kind of prove the impact of our business and uh, and see how it's, see how it goes. So when I worked at a media intelligence company, uh, we white labeled a, project, a product called Brandwatch, which is a social listening tool. Um, and what we wanted to do was uh, prove the effectiveness of uh, sponsorship of uh, the World Cup, which was going on at the time. So we took uh, examples of brands that were sponsoring and brands that are similar, but who were not sponsoring. Uh, and we wanted to prove whether it was worth spending that much money on sponsoring, essentially. So one of the, one of the examples was Pepsi and Coca-Cola. And we looked at based on the number of mentions, the sentiment and the engagement uh, around both of those two brands at the same time, whether it was worth um, one of them spending all those millions of dollars. Uh, and actually, the, the, it, how it ended up was we, we were able to prove that no, because the other brand got just as much engagement um, off the back of just being quite, you know, quite a similar brand in the same space. Uh, so that was really interesting and my first real sort of insight into how data can really help with that communication um, and, you know, promoting 
not just a product, but actually, you know, going a bit deeper into uh, how brands should be communicating and what they should be spending their money on. And then a second one that I really, really enjoyed working on was uh, a few years uh, back, my previous CEO at my previous company um, unfortunately had a really bad skiing accident and became paralysed from the waist down. Uh, and he'd been CEO of this company, a recruitment company, for over 30 years. Um, well, sorry, he'd worked at the company for over 30 years. He'd been CEO for about 15 years at the time which was just, you know, incredible. He was very much the leader of the business. Um, it was very much felt uh, within the business. Um, obviously a very kind of tragic, shocking accident that he had, but uh, he's one of the most inspirational leaders I've ever worked with because literally three months after he'd had this uh, tragic like, sort of accident and um, life-changing accident, he was back in the workplace and determined to sort of to use what had happened to him to make real change for people with disabilities in the workplace. Um, and within that, so we worked on a communications and marketing campaign, which, um, you know, sort of changed the dial and moved the needle on um, how people uh, were, were hiring people with disabilities, raising awareness of people with disabilities in the workplace. Um, and we were able to get him into all of the, the kind of top publications like The Times, the FT, and you know, to see that real change happening was very rewarding. The important metrics uh, for me, you know, it's still very tough to measure traditional print media. You know, you've got no real idea whether eyeballs are hitting a page. Uh, Although it is still, you know, we, we still know that it is a very good hit to us to have in, in kind of a national publication. Um, but I think vanity metrics such as, you know, readership figures and, and followers don't really mean anything. Um, I think engagement metrics are much more impactful. So, you know, it allows you to have an, an idea of what actually, you know, people think about your brand and think about your campaign, sentiment, um, you know, then it allows you to see their behaviours. Uh, which is really impactful because then, you know, when you're putting the strategy together for the next time around, you, you have a real deep understanding of how people have engaged and uh, understood what you, uh, you know, the campaign that you've been working on. Yeah, I think if people aren't using it already or, or are ignoring the fact that it, it exists, uh, I think they need to get ready to be behind. Uh, we've seen it accelerate extremely quickly since the launch of uh, ChatGPT. Uh, it's, it's gone sort of beyond, I think, what anyone else, what, what anyone would have kind of thought it would uh, by, by now. <laughs> Even some of the top uh, people working in AI are surprised at how advanced it's become in sh such a short period of time. So um, my personal view is, and I think it echoes a lot of views that I've seen out there, is that um, I think it will increase productivity not just in PR, but in, in all in all different ways. You know, it probably will steal some jobs, yeah, <laughs> um, in certain areas of comms and marketing. But my view is very much firmly that it, it still needs to be managed and guided. Uh, there is still a massive need for strategic uh, work done, done within comms and marketing. Um, so I do think, you know, having that tailored strategy is absolutely necessary. But I think, you know, personally, it's helped, you know, in, in an era of kind of low budgets and, and not, you know, not being able to have huge teams. Uh, I do think it is a massive help um, in terms of that productivity level. I think people will have to upskill in different ways. I think it'd be wise for people, let's take copywriters as an example. And, you know, I, I'm not a copywriter by trade, I, as in that's not my sole focus. So, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying this to be, uh, you know, uh, I just, just got to be careful around kind of what I say. I don't want to offend anybody <laughs> um, because I still do think copywriters, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a skill in itself. Uh, but I do think that uh, something like ChatGPT, for example, does have the ability to do something on quite a basic level, which will then need to go back and be edited properly. So I think if people aren't looking out for kind of what these AI tools are doing and how it can potentially affect what they are doing and their role and then thinking about thinking outside the box a little bit in terms of like okay well maybe this part of my skill set is you know not redundant yet but could become redundant in the future how can I then protect myself how can I sort of look outside the box and think 
five steps ahead to see, okay, well, if this is going to be the case, what do I need to do to, to kind of reskill and make sure that I do have the necessary skills for, you know, to be able to work in comms and marketing in the future. I would love for mind reading to be uh, to be invented. Um, but, no, it all, it all jokes aside. Um, I think, and again, I'm 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 thinking quite quite outside the box here. Um, but you know, a, a chip that is inserted into our brain that translates our thoughts straight into a piece of content. I mean, I might sound bonkers, but I don't think we're even that far away from it if we if we look at everything else that's going on in the world. And um, people do tell me that I'm quite crazy and out there, but hopefully that, that will happen one day because I think that would be really cool. And think of the productivity levels that would happen if you could literally just think something and it would be on either in a video or, or you know, a con piece of content that's actually usable. It's a very rewarding career. Uh, it can be difficult but it can be very rewarding as well. Um, you know, having to be, you know, you have to be able to work, uh, you have to be able to be comfortable working in a fast paced environment. It's not always fast paced, but a, a lot of the time it is. Um, and you have to be able to have the ability to sort of adapt at pace. Um, I actually really love that. So that's why I love working in this industry. But I think there's also a psychological element to it. So if you don't really care about how people tick or behave, you're going to find the strategy side hard because that's really, you know, how we strategize. Um, it's all about behaviors and audiences and things like that. Um, advice would be keep on top of trends, uh, learn every tool you possibly can, learn to interpret data that's going to be your friend. Um, and if you can, shadow someone in a business function uh, because if you have an, a solid understanding of how business operates, it makes life a lot easier. Um, and I really, truly, genuinely believe that no PR person at any business should be stranded on an island, either of their own choosing or of the business's choice. I think you have to get close to the business. It's imperative.